broadcasting live from the University of North Texas. This is NTTV Nightly News. Good evening and welcome to the great State Fair of Texas. I'm Andrew Fancher. I'm standing here at Union Circle where the sun went down a little bit sooner than usual. That's because of Fallback Sunday that went into effect yesterday. It's been a very eventful night here at the Hearst Conference Center. As you can hear, we have the crowds behind me. They're just erupting in cheer as Texas has moved to Trump's favor. The Denton Square is making itself more accommodating for pedestrians. This is being done by way of diagonal crosswalks. Yes, you heard that right, diagonal crosswalks. The anti-government movement was triggered by China's abrupt intrusion on the administrative region. And while economic officials assure us that the climb is temporary, the trickle-down effect of rising gas and grocery prices will affect everything. We can all agree that in 2016, the pre-election forecast, it was very off. So in that, do you trust this year's polls or are you a little skeptical? Why did UNT terminate relations with the CSC? Nearly five months after making a public information request on this issue, I was granted this 22-page dossier of emails between UNT and the FBI. Let's run the numbers as we have them in the studio. The incumbent, Greg Abbott, now sits at over 336,000 votes. While attempting to subdue Wright, who did have an outstanding warrant for an armed robbery, Officer Kim Potter mistakenly used her Glock handgun instead of her taser. On behalf of NTTV staff and faculty, we would like to wish our station manager, Phyllis Slocum, a happy belated birthday. Join us again tomorrow night at 6, back in the NTTV studio. Now, this is a great idea to make not only testing easier, but traveling safer. Now we just have to get to the airport on time. Well, Michaela, luckily, I don't have to worry about moving houses. I'm still on a dorm budget. While I may not take it to that extreme, I would meet you halfway with maybe one or two puppies. <laughs> As a first-generation student myself, I was very pleased to see something like this come to fruition. They're all my hometown team. We got the Stars, we had the Mavericks, but no Cowboys. Maybe next week. <laughs> Thanks for watching NTTV Nightly News. Two days into the UNT fall semester, the university chose to end its relationship with visitors receiving money from the Chinese Scholarship Council. The CSC provides government-funded scholarships for those wishing to attend Chinese universities, as well as mainland scholars looking to study abroad. Jim Bershite, primary spokesperson for UNT, said the decision is, quote, limited to 15 visiting researchers and does not impact any student enrolled at the university. Despite UNT's response, several of these scholars claim they are students of the university. Two of those scholars are willing to share their stories anonymously. Yeah, I'm the first of my family to study in America. Scholar One, a PhD student in China, came to UNT in 2019 with hopes of completing his doctoral dissertation in 2021. I came here as a visiting student and I, I believe that international exchange is beneficial for both of us. Hello. Scholar 2, a philosophy major, chose UNT because of our nine-year cooperation with the CSC. I really love UNT. I love my professor, love my department. Everybody is really so friendly for me. These scholars have one month to leave the United States. During this time, they must break their apartment leases sell personal vehicles, test negative for COVID-19, and purchase a one-way plane ticket to China. During the pandemic, if you want to go back to China, it's really, really hard. So I need to buy a ticket by myself. Failure to leave by September 30th could bring forced deportation. I have no idea why they are doing this. I am a visiting student here. Everything I did is legal. Uh, and I obey uh, academic moral standard. I, I don't know why they're doing this to us. Twelve days after the decision, Bershait said UNT took this action based on, quote, specific and credible information from federal and local law enforcement. Allison Beckwith, spokesperson for the Denton Police Department, said they were not involved in the case. This termination is really bad for UNT's reputation. And it's, it's my loss, it's also UNT's loss. To our knowledge, UNT is the only American institution to cut ties with the Chinese Scholarship Council. For NTTV News, I'm Andrew Fancher. 
The Oakwood Cemetery has been described as one of the best kept secrets of Denton. Now, two civic organizations have partnered up to preserve its history. In late 2020, the Oakwood Cemetery was adopted by the Stars of Destiny, a chapter of the Colonial Dames. And we are the host and the researchers for this particular cemetery. Which means that the Stars of Destiny have identified and cataloged nearly 300 veterans. Now we do have new burials all the time out here, and so that number may fluctuate as we get more information. The chapter is partnered with the Texas Veterans Hall of Fame, responsible for the graveside medallions. This is about half of what we have. Well, the purpose is to preserve our history of our veterans and to honor President Gary Steele served over two decades in the Air Force. He was one of three brothers who served in the Vietnam War. How very many are not here to listen. I never regretted being there. Uh, I woke up, realized what life was all about. Vice President Jerry Delano also served in Vietnam. I never felt like I did anything different. Everybody did their job. Delano was awarded five air medals for a year of service in country. Average flight was about seven to eight hours. Young Americans struggle and young Americans die in a distant land. Obviously, Vietnam was a very black time in our history. Now, Oakwood is a showcase cemetery, combining the importance of service with a mission to remember. For NTTV News, I'm Andrew Fancher.